Good evening, good evening, everybody. I pray everybody is doing well. Amen. I pray you had an amazing, an amazing day. Praise the Lord. God is good. God is good. He put another word in my spirit. And as we're coming to a close for the end of April, I wanted to go ahead and just share what the Lord placed. And it's interesting because I was actually in the bathroom doing my hair and the Lord was speaking to me. And he said, you know, how bad do you want your miracle? And it's interesting how the last two weeks, the Lord has been actually for the whole month. Actually, it's been a little bit longer than that, but it's been more vivid that he has been talking to me and really more clarity on how to pray and what to pray next. And the Holy Spirit's just guiding me little by little and little steps. But it's like as I keep stepping and stepping and stepping, it's becoming bigger, bigger and bigger. My prayers. Amen. To the expected end. And so the Lord is good. The Lord is good. And um, so I wanted, you know, I was doing my hair and the Lord said, how bad do you want your miracle? Because I, I still felt just a little short, <laughs> you know, of some prayers I was believing God for. And, uh, and I was like, I'm believing and I'm believing, you know, but I'm tired. I was tired and I just felt, okay, Lord. All right, Lord. And I just prayed and I just felt the Lord just you know lift me up and and really give me that hope again and amen i put some worship music on praise the lord then i was doing my hair and he says how bad do you want your miracle how far and then he reminded me how far will you go you know god it's amazing because god has a sense of humor and you have to have a sense of humor when you're talking to him like honestly I, that's why I say so much it's a relationship because it's between you and God and me and God have this relationship and the more I get to know him the more he just amazes me and I just I kind of sit there like Lord you know I don't get you sometimes but you do this this way and I guess it's to kind of test me or maybe you know, either test my faith or maybe just trying to show me something in the midst of it, you know, and it's interesting. So, you know, as soon as I planted my seed tonight and it was a small seed that I had planted, I I knew it. I had told, I had called a specific ministry, um, you know, I, asked, I, asked, I called a specific uh, ministry for prayer and I said, I want to plant a small seed. I said, toward my need. Because I just knew I needed to plant that seed. I felt it in my spirit. As soon as I planted that seed, she didn't even need to say anything. I felt it in my spirit. And I told her, I said, amen. The Lord is pleased. I said, my miracle is going to come. And she was like, well, amen. She looked at me like, wow, okay, <laughs> you know. You called me for prayer and you're here in agreement with me and and you already know the Lord spoke to you. But amen. God used that lady, that prayer line lady, um, to go ahead and just connect with me and agree with me. And we need somebody to agree with. You know, I have specific friends that I can call and and really pray with and um, that I know that really have a heart for prayer. And then there's times when I call my prayer hotline, the Richard Roberts group or Roberts ministry, amen. And so never fails, never fails with them. So um, so it was amazing. And then I went through my hair and that's when the Lord told me, you know, how far will you go for your miracle? How bad do you really want your miracle? Then he started reminding me. And he started reminding me of a couple of scriptures, which I want to share with. And this is how we're going to end our April. Now, remember, I said April showers bring May flowers. Now, when you think about it, you got fertile ground. You know, you got soil. There's already seeds planted in the soil, right? Because that's how we get flowers and trees. So there's already seeds in there. So it just needs the rain. And where does the rain come from? comes from the heavens right it comes from the sky the clouds god made everything so it comes down and uh and it starts fertilizing it and doing what it needs to do all of a sudden that seed begins to sprout and it begins to grow right 
Amen. A little bit of sun, some more rain, right? Amen. So it's a full blossom of the flowers, and it looks so beautiful. Makes your garden look so nice. Um, smells so good, you know. Um, if you're planting crops, you're getting some potatoes, some onions. You know, it's just, you know, it's just amazing how, um, you know, the type of seeds that we plant. Because we could plant seeds for flowers. We could plant seeds for a tree. We could plant seeds for a coconut tree, a banana tree. You know, uh, it's it's amazing. So it kind of reminds me of the type of seeds that you plant. If you are a sower like I am and believe in sowing in the kingdom, you know, the Lord will have you sow maybe for that flower, so for that potato, so for that coconut tree, that banana tree, depending on your need and how far you're willing to believe and stretch. Amen, amen. So at the end of this, this is the end of April, I wanted to go ahead and kind of touch a little bit about the woman with the issue of blood. And that is in the book of Mark. And I want to read it because how bad do you want your miracle? How bad do you want to see God move in your life? Are you willing to change your attitude? Are you willing to stay positive? Are you willing to plant your seed? Are you going to sacrifice and give up some things to see God work a miracle because you're tired? You're tired of the way you're living life? You're tired of waiting and nothing's happening? Well, there are some there are instances in the Bible, and that's what's amazing about it. It's a it's a love story for us. It's a it's a book. It's an adventure. It's the Word of God. So many things can come out of the Word. So the Lord has a solution for every problem that you have. You just gotta dig in the Bible and read it. So I want to go to Mark because the issue, the woman with the issue of blood, is one that I learned when I was in my thirties, early thirties, and I was evangelizing. And we did a um, we did a Bible study group in the houses, and this was one of the first ones that I really learned about the woman with the issue of blood, and it's actually in Mark chapter five, and I'm going to go ahead and read it to you. Now, there was a certain woman. Okay, um, now a certain woman had a flow of blood for twelve years, right? And let me turn my page. And suffered many things from, okay, suffered many things from many physicians. She has spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Okay, so this woman had an issue of blood, right? It was fine. They didn't know where she, the blood was coming from. And apparently she went to the physician. She went to the doctors. They couldn't find her. She spent all her money and she just grew worse instead of better. But, uh, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, okay, so she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed um, of the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him. Hmm, interesting, right? Okay. Um, he turns, right? He turns around in the crowd and says, Who touched me? Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. I'm in the video. I'm going to sneeze. Okay. Sorry about that. So, and Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the, multi the multitude thronging you, you know, they're pressing against him, the crowd, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see, to see her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Sorry. And so it's interesting how Jesus was already around doing miracles, right? And she heard about Jesus. And then, you know, she went to doctors, she spent all her money, she did everything that she could 
to go ahead and try to stop this bleeding, but she got worse. So she was at a very desperate time in her life. She heard about this man named Jesus who was making miracles happen. So she, even though he had a crowd pressed around him, she pushed through the crowd, snuck, and she had enough faith and desperation that if I just touched the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And when she did that with her faith and the point of contact of touching his hem, connected, whew, the miracle happened. Because she believed and she knew Jesus could do miracles. She had faith. She was in her desperate hour and the miracle happened. Immediately it said that the blood dried up um, inside of her and that affliction went away. Amen. And she couldn't even believe it. It says here that she was trembling. Like, wow, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. But Jesus said it. You know, he says here, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Amen. What are you believing God for tonight? Where are you planting your seeds? Are you believing for a miracle? How far are you willing to touch the hem of Jesus, to touch um, the hem of Jesus's garment. Amen. How far are you going to press against that crowd? No matter who's looking at you, no matter what people think, are you going to believe for the supernatural? Are you going to believe for that miracle? Are you going to believe Jesus? Or are you going to believe the people around you with the negativities? All right? Amen. Amen. So that is one example. Amen. The next one I, that came to me was the story of Hannah. This is another amazing story on here. Now, this has to be in the book of Samuel. And, um, and this is Hannah is actually Samuel's mother. So um, I'm going to go into the story a little bit here because we're going to talk about the mother and father. Now, it says on here, so her husband, you know, um, it says his name here. Okay, the uh, his name is Zophim. Okay, so it says a number two. This is chapter one, number two. It says, and he had two wives, right? So the name of one wife was Hannah, and the name of the other wife was Pania. But Pania, she had children, but Hannah had no children. Okay, so this is back in the day. You know, they used to marry a lot of women back then. Blah blah blah. Okay, Old Testament, old. Okay, so anyway. Um, this man went up from the, his city yearly to, yearly to worship a sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh, along with his two sons, right? So I'm going to skip a little bit and go down and to number five. It says here, but to Hannah, okay, let me go down. I'm sorry. Okay. And uh, number four, and whenever the time came for Echaniah to make an offering, he will give portions of Peniah, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah... Okay, he will give a double portion, for he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. And her, her rival um, also provoked her severely to make her miserable, because the Lord had closed her womb. So she was being made fun of, because she didn't have no children. And just to put on top of it, the other wife was having all these kids, and she wasn't having no kids. So let's, this is the story of Hannah. Let's see what happens, right? So... It says here, okay, so so it was year by year when she went up to the house of the Lord that she pro that she provoked her. Therefore, she wept and did not eat. Now, Hannah's vow, number eight. Then Elkaniah, her husband, oh, his name is Elkaniah, sorry, um, said, to her, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart grieved? Am I not better to you than 10 sons? You know, he understood and he accepted that she couldn't have children. And that's, you know, I guess the Lord's will and he accepted it, but he still loved her. So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now, Eli, the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of her soul. And prayed to the Lord and wept in, ang in anger. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed 
Look on the afflictions of your maidservant and remember me and not forget your maidservant, but will give your maidservant a male child. Then I, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life and no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart. Only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore, Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, how long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered him and said, no, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my spirit before the Lord. Do not consider your maidservant a wicked woman for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief, I have spoken until now. Then Eli answered and said, go in peace and the God of Israel grant your petition, which you have asked of him. And she said, let your maidservant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way and ate and her face was no longer sad now on here a little bit you know basically hannah like i said didn't have children and she was being mocked and she felt left out because she didn't have any kids even her husband was like why are you being so sad you know but a woman's pain is a woman's pain and things that we have to deal with i mean i'm sure the man wanted children but he had children with another woman but hannah wanted her own child right and so she went, they do like a, um, a sacrifice uh, festival thingy every year. They go ahead and worship the Lord. So she took that time out to really cry out to God. She cried out to God, God silently. And then as she was crying out to God, she made a vow to him. And she said, Lord, if you have favor on me and give me a son, I will give him back to you. Okay, so she made a deal with God. So Eli, the, pro, the priest, prophet priest, okay, came out and said, the Lord has answered your prayers, right? So she was happy. She felt that in her spirit, God answered my prayer. So she went along, right? And so what ends up happening after that? Then they rose early in the morning and worshiped before the Lord and returned and came to their house. This is her and her husband. And Elkanai knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So they went and had some sex. Um, made love and the Lord remembered her and it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel because I have asked for him from the Lord isn't that amazing isn't that amazing how in her desperate moment she went ahead and she made a vow with God and God answered her prayer amen so we already have two women one with the issue of blood with her faith, okay? Despite anything she believed. And Hannah went ahead and cried out. She was depressed. She was sad. But she didn't give up. She kept pressing on and pressing on, believing God. She made a promise to God that if she got a son, she'll give the son back to him. And she did. She ended up keeping her word. Amen. Praise the Lord. God has an interesting way of how he answers prayers. Amen. Amen. Now, the next one I want to go over is planting seeds, right? Similar to like what I did today, right? And the Lord, and like I said, the Bible has many different examples and many different stories in here on how God, um, you know, communicates with his creation, right? Amen. So this one here is on Malachi, right? And this is what happens when you bring your tithes, right? It says here on Malachi 10, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out such a blessing that there will, be, there will not be room enough to receive it. Then he adds something else to it. He says, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, so that he will not destroy the fruits of your ground. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field, says the Lord of hosts, and all the nations will call you blessed. For you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. So the seed was planted, brought all the tithes that has to do with financials. 
The Lord says to test him, try him and see if he does not take that seed and multiply. Then he adds another blessing to it and says, I'm going to rebuke the devourer for you. The one that's trying to steal your money. And you, sometimes you feel like you have holes in your pockets. You feel like you work so hard, you're not getting anywhere. You know, but the Lord says, because you trusted in me and you planted a seed in my home, in my house, I'm going to go ahead and bless you. And I'm going to rebuke the devourer for your faithfulness, right? Amen. Praise the Lord. So it is amazing. I'm sorry, my nose. Um, it is amazing how God has a story for each and every one of us. And I wanted to share. And now one really with the woman with the issue of the blood. Um, I know in the, in the Together Beyond Blessed group, we were talking about women. Okay, these are strong women out there that have faith in God. They believed in God. They were desperate in their hour, you know. And then Hannah, Hannah's story really touches my heart a lot. Although I've never gone through what Hannah has gone through, but I know many women have. And it's not easy to keep that faith. But, you know, whether it's a child or it's believing for a husband or, you know, maybe you're trying to get delivered from an addiction, um, maybe depression, you know, so many different things out there. How far are you believing God for your miracle? And are you going to give up and allow the devil to win? Or are you going to stand strong? Okay, like a pillar, you're going to stand strong and you're going to keep fighting the good fight of faith, right? And until that miracle comes and you're going to pray, you're going to give thanks to God for your miracle. Amen. You know, my own personal testimony, and I'll just share with you um, one, because this is the last scripture I want you to read. And this one here is um, actually in the book of Ecclesiastes. And it talks about making vows with God. Now, sometimes we got to be careful with the promises that we make to God. Because if you're not going to keep it, who ask God to forgive you? <laughs> ask God to forgive you, um, you know, and, uh, and repent from it, you know. But, you know, many times in our desperate situations, you know, we ask God and we plead bargains with him. You know, it, the Bible does it. You know, people in the Old Testament did it. And I'm sure people nowadays still do it. Make sure if you promise, made God a promise and you haven't fulfilled it, ask God to forgive you from it and repent from it and just say, Lord, you know, maybe you can renew a new promise to him or maybe just revise it in some way, but be very careful. But at the same token, it works. And the reason why it works is because I know it has done the same way it's worked for Hannah, the same way it's worked for me. And so on here, it, uh, it talks about the vow and uh, I wanted to read it to you. Um, it says here in Ecclesiastes chapter five, it says, fear God and keep your vows. Okay. But I'm going to kind of skip a little bit. And number four, it says, when you make a vow to God, do not delay to pay, to pay it for he has no pleasure in fools. Um, pay what you have vowed better not to vow than to vow and not pay. You know, so he's saying it's better not to make a, a vow. If you're not going to keep it, don't make a promise. If you're not going to keep the promise. Broken promises, you know how sometimes you're little and, you know, when you're smaller, your parents promise you something that never comes true. You know, those are broken promises, you know. Well, the Lord is saying it's better not to say anything at all, right? Don't make those promises if we can't keep them. So, but God does honor vows. And that's why I said, what are you willing to sacrifice? What are you willing to give up? You know, what are you willing to do for the Lord? Even if it's, you know, um, something as simple as I'm going to say hello to everybody today. I'm going to say, God bless you to, to, to people as I go along throughout my day or through my walk. You know, Lord, um, you know, I'm going to try, I'm going to try to give a dollar to every homeless person that I see. You know, God knows your heart and he knows what you can keep and what you can't keep. I'm not saying for you to make a vow that you cannot keep something high. No, I wouldn't do that. Sorry, I'm with the smallest little thing. So my personal testimony, and I'll share it. Um, you know, the reason why I do these videos and the reasons why I don't stop, I took a break and I told the Lord I took a break because I have promised him that I'll be his hands and feet and I will do whatever he asked me to do. And I kept my word. Um, and there's times there were breaks in between because life happened and, um, you know, and he understood, but there were times when he would come back and remind me, remember you said this. And so the Lord just continues, I just, I don't fight it. I just embrace it and just go along. And I just talk to God. Well, Lord, if you want me to do these videos, then 
help me be able to not be afraid of the camera or help me this and that, you know, and I just start talking to him and I don't mind anyway doing the works of the Lord because it's rewarding. Amen. It's part of my calling. So, um, way back in the day when I first started, um, my, my, uh, my, actually my oldest daughter had gotten into a little situation and she was a teenager by then. And I was really, really concerned for her. And so, um, as a mom concerned for their child, you know, I remember that's when I started going to church and I heard a sermon, um, you know, about, you know, promises to God and very similar to what we're talking about. So one day, um, at the end of service, I just went up, just nobody was there. I just went up by myself to the altar and I went on my knees and mind you, I did not know the Lord like I did then, but I knew like the woman with the issue of the blood, like with Hannah, then God can turn this around. I went up on my faith and I went on my knees and I said, Lord, if you save my daughter from the situation, I promise that I will do whatever you ask me to do. I'll be your hands and feet. And I was, I think, 33 or 32. I think it was 33 when I did that. And immediately, no joke, immediately after I did that, everything fell in place and it was done. And my daughter was saved and praise the Lord. She started going to church and everything in her life was changed forever. Praise the Lord. So, you know, that was, that's why, because I'll never forget that. You never forget when God does a miracle. And when God comes through for you, you never, never forget it. You shouldn't anyway. And I hope you don't. Because literally, where would we be without him? He saved us millions of times, you know. And, you know, how ungrateful can we be? You know what I mean? So, you know, I, you know, I, I always remember that, um, that vow that I made and I kept. And recently, again, I had, again, you know, renewed another promise for something in return. And I saw God's hand turning it around because it was a desperate situation. And so, again, how far are you willing to go for your miracle from God? How bad do you want your miracle from God? Amen. Amen. Um, everybody has their own relationship. I cannot speak for everybody. Cannot compare apples and oranges. Everybody is different. But all I know is that one thing. We serve a faithful God. He is an omnipresence God. He is everywhere. He is a sovereign God. And God is just amazing. And he answers prayers. You just need to just talk to him. That's all you got to do is just talk to him. He's not a hard God. He's a loving God. He's an understanding God. And he wants better for you. Amen. So I'm going to go ahead and close this with a prayer. And again, it is, we're going into May, where it's May flowers. Amen. It's a new season that's coming up. And I pray that the Lord will bless you and that the flowers in your life will blossom and that you're stepping into um, a season of newness, new beginnings, okay? That you are not who you were before, okay? You are a new person. You're stepping into your new identity. Okay. You're better than what you were before. The Lord is blessing you. He's restoring you. He's healing you. He's just doing these amazing things. I pray that every day, every single day, that when you wake up your eyes, you have hope and you can dream again. I pray, Lord, that your spirit will pour upon them and they will see you, Lord. They will see you, Lord. Oh my gosh, Lord. I pray that they experience you like never, ever before. That they are amazed by you, in awe of you. So, Lord, we just thank you right now for this month. We thank you for the blessings, Lord, that you have truly bestowed upon us. Thank you for, for our friendships. Um, thank you for sisters in Christ, um, for those brothers that need somebody to pray for them. I pray for, you know, I thank God that I pray that God will send you brothers to pray for you as well. I pray that the Lord will answer each, you know, like will answer all your prayers and give you your heart's 
desires that you may dream again. Amen. Amen. In Jesus name, I pray until the next time that we talk on a real, real talk with a real God. Amen. And together beyond bless women's group. Thank you again and good night to you all. Bye now.